I tend to only make videos on visual novels, but before I was a big visual novel fan, I was definitely a huge anime fan, watching over 500 anime over 10 years. I want to talk about what's pretty easily my favorite genre in anime, wholesome slice of life. Whether it's cute girls doing cute things, romance, or something else unique. This is one of my favorite genres where I just want to have that comfy vibe, especially when I come home from a busy day at work. So in this video, I'm going to talk about my personal top 10 favorite wholesome slice of life anime. At number 10, I have Yuru Camp, localized as Laid Back Camp. This is one of the shows many people think of when they think wholesome slice of life. It might be surprising that this is only number 10, but don't worry, I still think this anime is quite solid. Camping as a slice of life concept tends to only be used for like one or two episodes at most in mini anime, and I've only seen the concept used for a whole show a few times at most. But Yudu Camp is definitely the one that does it the best. I like how there's a surprisingly good progression in the story. It starts off with Rin simply just enjoying the outdoors and having camping all on her own. However, the show to me shines when she starts to go camping with other girls at the camping club, especially Natashiko. Rin isn't always with the main group or just Natashiko, but my favorite episodes were definitely the ones where characters are camping together. As someone who has done camping in real life several times, one of the most fun aspects of it was just doing it with really close friends. I also like that the anime had some legitimate explanations of what real camping is like without going full deep dive in a boring way. Overall, I think Yudu Camp is definitely a very solid, wholesome slice of life that I think is a good one to recommend to those new to the genre. It's just not quite a personal favorite of mine. At number 9, I have New Game. I figured it'd be nice to have at least one title on this list that actually has adult age characters, and this has the benefit of having a pretty cool premise of all the main girls being part of a game development company. I like that the series has a good mix of kinda unique cute girls doing cute things interactions with their own mild character gimmicks, but they also have some legitimate look into things of what a game company would do when making a proper MMO video game. Outside some moments in Season 2, Things don't get too serious in terms of the game development part, so it just ends up being a pretty cool hybrid slice of life backdrop. What I really like about this show is that everything is all about the character interactions. Alba, the main character, is a fresh out of college graduate, so she's naturally going to be by far the newest at the game company. So it's wholesome to see her interact with her various coworkers, getting to know their personalities and interests, but also just seeing what exactly their position is at work and so she can work better with each of them. As someone who also works in a software development company, I actually think the vibe of the company is pretty similar to mine in that people are actually pretty chill but still hard working. There's no executives constantly breathing down your neck, but of course, there's still time limits, so people are motivated to work when there's just not that constant extra source of anxiety. I would only say the reason the series isn't higher is because while this series is consistently laid back and wholesome, there's not quite as many super heartwarming scenes that stick out which is a big contender of what would be a high entry on this list. But the fact that New Game has consistently likable characters and a chill, wholesome vibe is something I definitely enjoyed in both seasons. At number 8, I have Kimi ni Todoke, or translated as From Me to You. This is one of the few shoujo anime on this list. There's a few great things about this show. In many shoujo anime and manga, they tend to make the main love interest kind of a douche, so I'm glad the main male love interest is actually a, a pretty nice cool dude for once. The main girl, Sawako, at least to me, is the main selling point of the show. She's a very relatable, shy person, and she makes funny faces that she doesn't mean to, which sadly, unfortunately, scares people off at times. She would like to make more friends, but kind of copes by being overly humble, which is definitely seen as an interesting character flaw. The main other thing I really like about the show is the friendship aspect. With Sawako becoming friends with two unexpected popular girls, Ayane and Chizuru. These are two outgoing or and or popular girls, so seeing these type of girls becoming best friends with who's essentially the accidental outcast of the class was very heartwarming to see, and these interactions might actually be the best part of the show. Honestly, the main thing holding back Kimi ni Todoke on this list are a few things. Unfortunately, despite the main couple having wholesome interactions, it definitely takes at least more than one season to get them together, romantically. There's some kind of dumb, typical melodrama that Shoujo likes to have that it takes for the main couple to finally get together. There's also a few unlikable recurring characters. 
but thankfully, most of that is forgettable with the general wholesome vibes of the show. At number 7, I have Hiramari Sketch, translated as Sunshine Sketch. This, in my opinion, is one of the most surprisingly underrated cute girls doing cute things slice of life shows, despite the fact that it's animated by Shaft and has over three to seasons. I like how the theme of the show is a bunch of girls being in art school. It helps gives this show an identity because Many of the main six girls have their own struggles related to how they want to get by in this art school. In fact, one of the students isn't actually all that interested in art, but still attends the art school regardless. But the main selling point for me is how the girls all live in a dormitory that's really close to the school. This makes it easy for them to both have their alone time when needed, but whenever they just want to hang out together, it's as easy as just going to one of the characters' rooms, those usually heroes. Seeing them be able to joke around together, but also occasionally be serious when they want to talk about what they're doing with their life, it's pretty wholesome to watch, and definitely a reason why I quite like this series. But the main thing holding back Hidamari Sketch is that it's kind of inconsistent quality-wise. While I mentioned that the series has six main characters, it takes about two to three seasons for the last two main characters to show up and be part of the main crew. The first four main characters are good, but the slice of life isn't always as engaging in these first two seasons as I'd like. Once the last two characters show up, the slice of life quality becomes a lot more consistent, especially in season three and four. There's also a few recurring characters that can be kind of annoying, the main one being Yoshinoya Sensei. Thankfully, she's not the worst character ever and can have good moments. At number six, I have Amanchu. This is a slice of life with yet another pretty interesting premise. The girls are all part of a diving club of all things. Definitely the main selling point and why I love the show so much is the main duo. Hikari, usually nicknamed Pikari, and Futaba, usually called Teko. These two are the classic outgoing energetic girl and shy unconfident girl duo, and they are done excellently well. Futaba, or Teko, the shy one, starts off not really showing what she wants to do as she just recently moved into town, but with an encounter and many future interactions with Pikari, She's eventually roped into the diving club, and seeing her develop into someone much more comfortable being herself was quite heartwarming to see. While Picotti herself doesn't quite have as much development as Teko, she's still in a pretty amusing Genki girl and has her occasional cute moments that are definitely surprising. Honestly, the main flaw I can think of the show is whenever these two are not on screen, the other side characters just aren't quite as interesting. I especially don't care for I, Nino Mia since she's just kind of an annoying bitch, especially to her younger brother. It doesn't help that she gets an arc in Season 2 that I wasn't particularly into, but otherwise, anything related to Picotti and Teko are the lifeblood of Amanchu for me, and why I keep praying there will hopefully be an eventual Season 3. At number 5, I have Bimbo Shimai Monogatari, which literally translates to Poor Girl's Story. This is probably both the most niche title on this list, and also has the most unique premise. One would not expect, as the title says, to have a slice of life story about two poor girls just getting through life. It seems like it would just be straight up depressing on paper, but in execution, it's quite the opposite. Despite the sisters being poor and not having any parental figures to live with, I actually like how both of them divide the workload of living day to day. The older sister, Kyo, has an part-time newspaper delivery job while the younger sister, Asu, is one that does the cooking. Seeing the two just interact day to day, making it through life, shows that it's possible to have a happy, wholesome-ish life despite your monetary disadvantages. The interactions between the two sisters are quite wholesome without being too cheesy. You can tell that they definitely love each other, and even when they have arguments here and there, they eventually make up, which to me at least is realistic. However, there's also surprisingly really good interactions with various minor characters. Asu, the one who stays at home cooking all the time, is usually the one who interacts with these characters, whether it's these other white hair sisters or next door neighbors, stuff like that. These interactions are quite wholesome because the neighbors are well aware of the main sisters' poor situation but don't overly pity them but are still willing to help out when needed. Overall, Bimbo Shimai Monogatari is easily one of the most criminally overlooked, unique, wholesome, slice of life shows. It's just too bad that it's not particularly well known or officially licensed because I think this is a, a wholesome slice of life just made for me. At number 4, I have Kofuku Graffiti, localized as Gourmet Girl Graffiti. Similar to Amanchu, 
This is a slice of life with a shy girl and talkative energetic girl duo and their main interactions. The main difference here is that there's a much bigger theme on family, especially since the two main characters are second cousins. I love how the first episode pretty much sets the tone of the series. It's all about cooking, with the main gr shy girl character, Ryo, being good at it technically, but at first, food just doesn't taste that great to her because she doesn't have someone to share the food with. Once Kiden eventually starts to live with Ryo, the food that Ryo makes starts to taste better, purely because she has a now close second cousin to share her feelings with. This sets the stage for the rest of the series, mostly being around the main two cousins interacting, trying out new food, and interacting with various other minor characters. To me, this show is carried by these two since they're the perfect polar opposites in terms of personality while still being very nice to each other and having some surprisingly decent character development throughout the series. Similar to Shogeki no Soma or Food Wars, Kofuku Graffiti has what I like to call food orgasms, where some characters just eat food that apparently tastes so good that they get overly excited. These scenes are pretty funny without being too over the top as Food Wars. Thankfully, they don't go stripping or anything like that show. Honestly, the only flaw I can think of with Graffiti is that there's technically a tertiary main character in Sheena, who is pretty likable, but she barely gets to interact with the main duo, which is very unfortunate. Other than that, this is one of those simple, wholesome slice of life shows that is made for me. I'm just kind of sad it has a less than 7.0 average on my anime list. And now we're going to some of my super top tier all time favorite wholesome slice of life shows. As with number three, we have Aharen Sen wa Wakaranai, sometimes translated as Aharen is indecipherable. This is an interesting slice of life romance. It has a mix of quirky comedy and surprisingly really wholesome moments. The premise is that the two main characters are socially awkward and struggle to make friends due to their apparent dispositions. However, both of them simply just want to make friends and when they just happen to sit next to each other due to their shared quirky socially awkward personalities, they're able to hit it off really quickly. I like how as early as episode 1, there's a moment when Aharen, the main girl, overtly and honestly thanks the main male, Raido, for taking the time to go out of his way to talk to her and give her her eraser despite the fact that she's that she lost confidence and has trouble talking to people to the point where she ends up talking really quietly most of the time. Because of this interaction, Raido and Aharen quickly become very fast friends who do a lot of quirky yet wholesome things together. Their relationship only gets stronger as the series goes on with one of my favorite scenes of the show being a very wholesome moment in the very last episode. However, these two surprisingly are not the only wholesome part of the show. There are a whole lot of minor characters who have their own moments. For example, Aharen's closest female friend is incredibly socially anxious, but seeing how surprisingly close the two girls are together make for some great moments. But even stuff like a subplot about how these recurring kid characters kind of grow closer is nice too. Overall, despite Aharen being technically a mix of quirky, unique comedy, and wholesome. The wholesome moments are just so good that they are more than enough to put this in my top 3 wholesome anime slice of life. At number 2, I have Ore Monogatari or My Love Story. This is pretty easily my favorite shoujo series, though it is pretty subversive in general considering that the main character is male for once and the main female does have some typical traits of shoujo female protagonists but is not the lead character. But that aside, unlike Aharen, which is more of a comedy wholesome mix, my love story is pure wholesome through and through, to the point it might actually give you diabetes with how ridiculously sweet it is. This is a series where the main two characters actually get together within the first few episodes, which is an extreme rarity and something I wish happened more often in romance anime. The main couple have a really cheesy way of first meeting, with Takeo saving Yamato from a train groper. From this scene onward, you can tell there's a very much love at first sight from both of them, and basically any and all their interactions are just so ridiculously sweet. It can might be kinda unrealistic how overly they are into each other, but I love their interactions so much that I don't really care. In all 20-ish episodes, the main couple basically keep these interactions incredibly sweet and wholesome from start to finish, with maybe a little melodrama here and there. These two are just way too nice to each other and to their friends, and I basically loved any interactions these two had with each other but also with other characters too. Speaking of which, not only is there a top tier romance in the show, there's also surprisingly a top tier wholesome bromance. Takio's best male friend, Suna, 
has been super close a childhood friends with him. This is an interesting relationship because Suna is probably closer to what one might expect for a typical shoujo male love interest, but he's secretly the coolest wingman ever, since unlike Takio, he's a typical pretty boy bishonen and is even popular in the by the girls in the main show. However, these same girls have secretly shit-talked Takio behind his back and Suna wasn't very happy to see his best friend get shit-talked by girls who claimed to love Suna himself, so Suna always gave these girls the cold shoulder, which was low-key really great stuff. But once Takio, his best friend, found a girl that loved him as much as he loved her back, Suna was basically willing to give both of them the best support ever in keeping them together. This group of three characters is one of my favorites in romance anime because all of their interactions are super wholesome and pretty funny as well. There are various other nice characters and subplots that do bring up the series even more, but really, it's these three main characters that make Ore Monogatari one of my all-time favorite wholesome slice-of-life anime. And now, we're getting into my number one favorite slice-of-life wholesome anime series, the Aria series. This one might be confusing with how the names are, but Season 1 is Aria the Animation, Natural is Season 2, and Origination is Season 3. Aria has one of the most unique settings on this list. It takes place in an alternate universe version of Venice that somehow takes place on Mars. The main theme of the show is gondola touring, with all of our main characters practicing to be masters at gondola tourism, essentially. The anime has two really interesting goals. The first one is more the slice-of-life day-to-day -day interactions with where one of the main heroines, usually Akari, interacts with potential gondola customers along with one of her mentors. With these interactions, Akari learns to become better tourist guides, but you also get to learn the lives of one-time only characters and seeing them enjoy the world of Neo-Venezia. The other goal of the show are the main three heroines, Akari, Aika, and Alice doing practice sessions together. I really love the dynamic between these three main characters as they all have different strengths and weaknesses related to gondola touring. For example, Alice has the best gondola skill, but the worst at interacting with customers. Akari is a great people person using her genuine wholesome optimism and curiosity that helps draw in customers and many other people to interact with her, but she's overall the least skilled at rowing since she gets distracted quite easily. Aika is somewhere in the middle, not a genius at anything like Akari or Alice, but instead she's the pinnacle of a normal girl who has to get by through extreme hard work. Of the main trio, she's essentially the harsh one that makes sure Akari and Alice works on their issues. But if Aika has her own flaw, it's the fact that she has a troubled relationship with her own mentor, and clearly prefers Akari's mentor, Alicia. All three main characters get very solid character development throughout the series despite this being slice of life heavy leading to some incredibly wholesome and feelsy moments, some of my all-time favorites in any anime. Between these and the comfy one-episode-only side characters that get their nice wholesome vacation gondola riding, and various other side characters I just really enjoy, the comfy vibe of Aria from start to finish. There are some episodes I'm not super into, like anything related to Kate Sith, but basically everything else to me is the epitome of what wholesome slice of life should be. Something new and exciting, having the main girls go through something of a character arc, but most importantly, having little to no drama while still having interesting stuff happen. It helps that the world building is quite good too. And there you have it, my personal top 10 favorite wholesome slice of life anime. There aren't many other honorable mentions I was tempted to include as I've watched quite a lot of them, but at the end of the day, I can only pick 10 and these are the ones that just stick out the most to me. What are your thoughts on the 10 wholesome slice of life anime that I chose and what are some of your favorites? Feel free to leave a comment below.